kids get to popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the space viking, Thor Odinson. He was no ordinary man. He was a god. Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama. Welcome to our channel, Pause and Animation. Today we are covering the fourth Thor movie, Thor Love and Thunder. Yes, for Superhero Month. As Rascal said, it's the fourth Thor movie, the sequel to Thor Ragnarok, and it was the 29th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm -hmm. and it reintroduces us back to his lady love, <laughs> and an incredible villain portrayed by none other than Christian Bale. Yes, and before we start, of course, be sure to like, subscribe, and catch all these future podcasts and all the past videos. Absolutely. They had quite a few stars that actually appeared in this movie. I guess you could say casting. We had, of course, Chris Hemsworth returning as Thor and Tessa Thompson returning as Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. And you had Natalie Portman returning as Jane Foster, who we hadn't seen since the first movie. Yeah. And then you had uh, Taika Waititi. I think you know who that is. Yeah. He's also the, the director of the movie, too. Okay. And you have Russell Crowe as Zeus, and you had some... Uh, oh, uh, Christian Bell as the villain. And then you had some other actors that were in here portraying roles that weren't as big. But the cast was good. It was actually a good assembled cast. That's yeah. one thing they did get right in this movie, is the cast was really good. Definitely. And... We have seen a sort of mixed bag of reactions and reviews from people who have seen the movie. Some thought it was great for the ones who loved Thor Ragnarok because they liked it was not so stuffy like the first two movies, according to them. Some couldn't stand it, thought it was terrible. Some thought it was just okay. So there really wasn't a unanimous opinion on the movie. But there was a box office opinion. The budget was $250 million, if you can believe it. That's mm. a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. And the the budget, I mean, was $250. Mm -hmm. And the box office take was $760 million. So according to box office, it was a triple success. Yes, definitely. And we really weren't sure about seeing the movie ourselves mm -hmm. because we were like, why is there another Thor movie? You had your trilogy. What more are they going to do? Well, they made up something and made a movie out of it. And given that pretty much all the Avengers are gone aside from Thor, he's like the last one left alive, I'm guessing they're going to try to use him Hawkeye. as much as they can. Well, Hawkeye, it seems like they want to acknowledge him anymore on this alive. TV show. Yeah. He's yeah, he's alive too. They're just, for some reason, not acknowledging him anymore. It seems like they're banking on Thor and Spider-Man and the other characters that were left over from Infinity War. So, like I said, we were stunned that they were going to do a fourth movie we thought they were done and with this one is sort of I it looks like it's supposed to be a rom-com now part rom-com part action adventure actually let's if you haven't seen it it's a slight spoiler for the first hour and four minutes is a rom-com and then from that point on it's actually the superhero movie it should have been and yeah. was intended to be and the first hour could have just gone without happening and they could have picked this up at the end, the last four minutes, like the hour and four minutes into it. Pick up at the four minutes and then gone with the rest of the movie. Because that's when the movie gets good. After yeah. an hour and four minutes, the movie really gets good. But up until that point, it's just a yeah. lot of stuff that just really didn't need to happen. Yeah, and that's a lot to sit through. And if we weren't doing a review for it here, we would probably wouldn't have gotten to the good part of the movie because you have to wait over an hour for a two-hour movie. Half the film is one thing, and then the other half of the film is another thing. It was like two different movies. And the rom-com part of it, to us at least, it didn't work. It I guess too all. much for one thing on Jane's sickness. Yeah. That was one thing. Yeah, we know this was in a comic, and for a short time, yeah, she was uh, Thor, and they did have a Lady Thor. We, we do know this did happen. They all knew all different Avengers. But here's the thing. There's a reason why they all knew all different Avengers didn't work out so well, because 
They were trying so hard to make you forget about the old ones. Here's the new ones. You better like it. And it turned people off. They decided to wait years later to start incorporating those characters back in slowly but surely. The only difference is that if um, we're not going to spoil the ending, they won't be using Lady Thor in another movie. So it's just after this movie, that's it. Well, it's not a spoil. I'm sure by now everyone knows how it ends. Yeah. And I think the thing that shocked me the most is when you told me that she was digitally enhanced like She-Hulk. Yes. And a few of the women in the cast were, yes, digitally enhanced to look a bit stronger or like they had more muscle and you could tell the difference because when Jane was not in the Thor persona she was very skinny and supposed to be more a little more frail she looked completely different so yes they kind of gave her a glow up bit digitally when she's in the Thor form now I know that a lot of people like Ragnarok and they like what do you call him I'm just gonna say common pa- Thor. Oh, party Thor! Party He's Thor. rock and roll and epic! And, uh... But for me, and again, we don't necessarily have to agree, but for me, Chris Hemsworth shines when he's Thor the superhero. Mm-hmm. From that, again, after that hour and four minutes, when he got to the part where it became serious and he was acting, and you could see the pain that he put through in his eyes and like he was going to cry and it got more serious he shined from that point on that's when he shines the most when he's being the superhero Thor to me and again that's when the movie got better that's when Natalie Portman shined that's when uh, Tessa shined that's when everyone but Christian Bale shined he shined from the beginning to the end yes I know you think I'm biased and I am but he was fantastic from the beginning of the movie all the way to the end because his villain, his villain character had layers. He actually had several different emotions going on throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. And he performed each one incredibly as he always does. Right. But from again, that hour and four minute point on is when Chris Hemsworth shined. Yes. He absolutely shined. He was fantastic. He reminded me of the Thor in the first and second movies. I really enjoyed him from that point on in this movie. Not a fan of Ragnarok. If you guys like it, that's okay. But I just like him when he's being the superhero. Yeah. He shines. His acting and his performance is just miles above when he's commoner Thor or part yeah, of Thor. Yeah, and... We know that this is what Chris Hemsworth chose to do with the character, and they allowed him to have a little more free reign with his character. And he claimed he was tired of playing the stuffy prince Thor. He was too boring. He didn't have enough fun. It was too dramatic and everything. He wanted to be more like himself, where he was partying and cool and playing Guns N' Roses in the background. He fights epically and all that. And I don't know. I know there are some that like this version of I love the Guns N' Roses. That was part of some of the best music of the movie. I was like, I love my Guns N' Roses. This is this song. This is Sweet Child of Mine. This is Welcome to the Jungle. Of course you knew all the songs. Yes, it was great. That was a good part. And the whole phase of first hour, it was like everything that they said was a joke. Mm -hmm. Everything was a joke. Even him losing his family, his whole family dying, him losing his hammer, him having emotional breakdown. Uh, getting out of shape, falling apart. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, remember that? Remember when he was fat? Remember that? Remember when he lost his brother twice in front of his eyes? Oh, it was hilarious. And it's kind of like, okay, are you just kind of throwing salt in the wound? Or are we supposed to be laughing along with you? It was kind of hard to judge what was the tone they were saying besides badly rom-com in the beginning. Because, yeah, he got back into shape, he put himself together, Start fighting for the people again, which he did. But it felt weird that he were trying to turn his whole tragedy of him losing everything into, oh, it's no big deal, it's a joke. And almost everything he was doing was a joke for an hour. Now, one of the good parts in the first hour and four minutes, and I know it was for you, was the appearance of Guardians of the Galaxy. For a minute. And for about five minutes total because they came in a couple different parts. But still, it was a better part of the first half of the movie. 
and things happen that they pretend happen that never happen. No, you never <laughs> will. Because if they're all you can have adventures, yet you're not going to see them pretty and much. And that's unfortunate because it looks like that would have made a great movie. I guess they said too much how did, how did they drop the ball on that? That would have made a great movie. Yeah, they thought they were going to be involved in this movie and he leaves. He's like, all right, he's done. He's going to find himself having his spiritual awakening and all that and, and uh, they leave and that's the end of them. They don't come back for the rest of the movie and it's odd because the way the trailer advertised it, they were going to be part of the story but lo and behold, that wasn't it because I guess they didn't want to have to focus on too many characters all at once and be cluttered. Well, they have to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> and the ones they had were like jokes. Russell Crowe is a fantastic actor. In here, I don't know if he was meant to be a joke or the serious, purple. but it came off as a joke. I couldn't tell what the performance was actually supposed to be. I, yeah, which I don't is, think again, they did. disappointing for me because I've seen him in other movies, and as everyone knows, he's a hell of an actor. Right. I think he wasn't used to his full potential here. Yeah, that's, because... That's how I feel. Yeah, I think the script wasn't clear because you had two different tones of the movie. Rom-com, rom-com, laugh your head off at everything this man does. And then the second half, this is serious, lives are at stake, end of the world and all that. And it was two conflicting tones for the movie. And I think Zeus was going to have two conflicting characters. Either he was showboating and narcissistic and... He's a he's a uh, he's it's funny because he's so arrogant, got a big head and all that. He thinks he's bearing everybody. Then you get to the second half, and he's such an deplorable person that he doesn't care if the people are supposed to be serving him all wiped out. He'll get new people. All that matters that he is the one everyone is worshiping. And yeah, you don't even know if it's a joke or it's directed at somebody or not. Right. It's very conflicting. Yeah, Kevin Feige was still involved. But the, I think Watiki had a different idea, and they clash because it's two different movies and two different characters. Watiti. Watiti. Yeah. So, for me, the first half is skippable except for the appearance of Guardians of the Galaxy and Christian Bell's performance. But that second half is outstanding. That is the best part of the movie, and I really wish you could skip the first hour Right. And then from an hour and four in to the end of the movie, watch it because that's where the magic happens. That was the movie. And it's kind of like they had this great idea, they had this great movie, and then someone said, let's add this stuff onto the front of it. Let's uh, build up to this. As screaming goats. <laughs> and, yeah, which was funny at times and at times it wasn't. But it's like there were two different movies and they smashed them together. And that's unfortunate because if the whole movie could have been like the last hour, this would have been, it would have made even more money. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it would have made way more money than it did. Right. I think for some people, as you mentioned, who love Ragnarok, they were fine with the beginning, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people who weren't. Right. You want to see a superhero movie. Right. They had Ragnarok. That was okay. Mm -hmm. They went a different route. Right. And he did something different fantastic yeah but don't bring that for me into the beginning of this movie this is a superhero movie and again yeah you christian yeah. bell just being christian bell and you see the first part I, I, i'm sorry you see the yeah. first part of the movie forgive me where it comes in the first five minutes is not bad forgive me because christian bell starts the movie mm -hmm. and you see this how he becomes a villain that was fantastic from that point on up to an hour and four minutes is when it just shouldn't have happened. Right. It's like that first part of the movie should have happened, and then it should have gone to the hour and four and picked up. Right. And one more thing to mention, I also mess with the movie, is that you want more, I guess, families to see these movies. You're trying to get the maximum dollar. Well, unfortunately, families can't watch this movie unless their kids are allowed to see a lot more stuff than you think. True. Because there's so much... R-rated, says PG-13, there's a lot of R-rated dialogue in here, a lot of R-rated scenes. They show Thor half-naked most of the part of the movie. 
for no, for no reason whatsoever. And there's some dialogue. For like the first 30 seconds, it's a plus. But then after and then that, it keeps going. Right. You just keep kind going. Of want the movie to keep going. Okay, I've seen it. Woohoo. Let's move the movie on. This is a superhero movie. There's, yeah. And there's some dialogue <laughs> in there that's like, okay, they really shouldn't be saying this in the movie because they got pretty explicit in some things they were saying. Like, and they were actually showing a couple scenes. Like, it still got a PG-13 rating. You're kind of surprised. They were just really close to just being R- an R-rated rom-com. And in one of the scenes, the one where he's with the wolf woman, that's, he's actually, showing it that's actually his real-life wife, Elsa Pataki. I guess it was fine. I guess they said, well, we'll make sure you do this. You're going to do it with your wife because you're not getting in trouble and we're not getting sued. Yeah. So I guess so, yeah. But if you've seen Thor... Love and Thunder. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Did you love it as it was? Did you think the second half was better after the first five minutes like we did? Or did you think something else? Yeah. Let us know what you think. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. Don't expect it to be fully superhero. Mm -hmm. And don't write it off because the first five minutes as well as the last hour are really exceptional. They are the parts that make the movie great. Right. So it's definitely something we recommend. Just don't look for it to be fully superhero. Yeah. Because it isn't. And Natalie Portman did do a great job. Don't like how it ended. Don't like... I think the character deserved better. And there were a few parts in here where it made her seem like she was a jerk. Her character, yeah. not Natalie Portman, but... Jane was a jerk, yeah. and especially a jerk to uh, Thor, mm -hmm. and then it got all messed up. That could have been left out as well. Yeah. And if you haven't already subscribed for updates, we can visit favorite anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate you. If you want to check out your channel, let us know in the comments below, and stay tuned for more superhero awesomeness during Rascal Superhero Month. Yes. <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a tuned day. Peace.